One of the things that we may be doing when we're working on code is generating data, obviously, but we may want to walk away from that program and still have that data for number of reasons. Maybe we're not walking away from it, but we're taking that data and, and we have another program that we need to pass that information into. But, you know, we don't, we didn't build it. It's not code or something like that. It's like a GUI. Either way, that's where we get into file handling. And the entire idea is if you've ever played a video game, that's what saving your game is. You're creating something that would be considered persistent data. I need to take sort of the values, the ones and zeros, the numbers uh, or the strings and anything that I have in my program and I need to put it into a file. And so that allows me to then again, go and use it later on or you know just have a copy of that elsewhere outside of my program. Because again, if my program closes, then it's removed from memory. So when we start dealing with files, the first thing that we have to understand is something known as file location. And even before we get to relative, the first one I wanna focus in on is something known as absolute file paths. Now, the idea behind this is, regardless if you're on a Windows, a Mac, a Linux machine, you have something known as a root directory. All of your program files, all of your programs, all of your music, everything, it's all sitting somewhere inside of the root directory. And the idea there, I use that term, directory. The entire idea is this is where we get the concept of folders. So the root directory, for example, is going to happen to have a number of directories as well. And if I'm dealing with something like absolute file paths, what I need to do is I need to explicitly start with my root directory. So that's for the Windows and then that's for a, a Unix based system. So, okay, let's even see this in action. If we take a look at a command prompt, I've been working off of the CSC 111 folder that I built sort of at the beginning of this course. And you may notice that there's a number of different elements going on here. There's that C drive going on and colon because it needs to specify what root directory. If you happen to have multiple you know, hard drives and whatnot, whatever. But then you see users, Atom, desktop, 111. And if I go and type in DIR, I can see that there's even more. So literally there's the template notebook that you work off of. There's a demo PY, and then there's each week, the project, images, data. There's just a number of different directories inside of these. And if I were to go in and see the change directory to data, you'd see that there's something like uh, iris or readings.txt. Now, when we're dealing with absolute file paths, the way to think about this is I'm being explicit to the point of saying, starting from all the way in the root directory, this is the thing I'm referencing. And so a way to think about this. If I go in and do readings.txt, you're gonna see that it pulls up that file. And so it's been opened up and you see it's a bunch of numbers. We'll talk about those later on. But, okay, that was because I'm in that root directory. But what happens if I'm not in that root directory? Oh, I don't, you can see there's nothing there that I can refer to. So the idea behind absolute file paths is to very explicitly go all the way from, again, root directory to that file. So if I wanted to see, for example, the readings.txt file again, because I'm processing it or I'm editing it, I'd need to come in and go, you know, in my case, root directory of C, users, Adam, desktop, not debug, desktop, CSC 111, data, readings.txt. 
now that I've put all of that in, oh, I can see the data once again. But that's where we also now get into the idea of relative file paths, because realistically, you are not going to have a folder on your computer called Adam, unless your name's Adam, but you don't count. Uh, either way, the entire idea is, well, if I try to reference, say, for example, users Adam, readings.txt and I don't happen to have an Adams folder well my code is going to crash because again uh, Python doesn't know that folder it's like oh I, I can't see that so nothing's there when we think about a relative file path what's going on here is now we're saying well I'm going to just use my surrounding environment to reference some material so the same kind of concept goes into play. If, for example, instead of going CD, if, say, for example, again, I'm sitting in sort of my root, or not root directory, I'm sitting in something we would call a parent directory. I, again, have that data folder that is sitting sort of inside of me. Well, when we think about relative file paths, Instead of going in and typing all of this information of absolute file paths, instead, I could just reference, oh, I have a folder, data, and I can reference readings.txt from it. And so that's where this idea of a relative file path can come in. But say, for example, I'm not looking at the folder from below me. Well, in that case, let's say, for example, we're in week 06. I still want to reference that, uh, that readings.txt. Well, that's where, if you happen to notice, uh, if I were to take a look at this line in particular, I mean, there we are, you might notice that, you know, every computer uh, regardless, you know, Windows, Linux, Mac, if you list out the directories on a command prompt, you're going to see those dot dots. And the entire idea is that this first dot references that I'm in, this is my directory. If I'm here, you know, dot refers to myself. If I refer to dot dot, then what I'm saying is, oh, go up a directory. And just to see that in action, if I were to say, oh, if I were to, there we are. If I were to say cd dot dot, change directory, up a directory. Oh, what do you know? I go up a directory. So again, that's just sort of referencing that I have a way to go to a parent directory. Well, again, if we think about this, that parent directory has a data folder in it. So if I wanted to reference readings.txt, go up a directory, which has the data file, readings.txt. Okay, so I've explained how files work, but I haven't explained how to load them into Python. So let's take that exact same idea and put it into place. Again, we're still working off of that CSC 111 file uh, structure that we're, or folder that we're working off of. Again, if I'm thinking about this from the week six folder, that's where I'm sitting right now. And you can sort of see that's going on here, you know, notebook, desktop, 111, week 06. That's a very important part. So if I want to reference the file, again, I have two different ways that I could handle this. The first one, again, I'll start with the absolute file path. And I'll call it ab, abs file. Is again, we're starting to uh, focus on the idea of uh, where it is in relation to the root directory. Well, again, if we are thinking about that, just to cheat, you see that it's in the C, uh, users, Atom, desktop, uh, 111. So yeah, again, I'm going to do a quick little cheat and highlight that information. <laughs> there we are. Slash reading oh, data 
slash readings.txt. So again, I've explicitly stated go all the way to my root directory. And my computer has an atom.txt or atom folder in it, so it will be perfectly fine. But again, I've just referenced it. I, all I've done is made a string. That's it. So how do I open it? Ah, well, glad you asked. If I come in and I like to reference it, uh, I typically like to call this variable phi uh, because file sometimes is uh, a special uh, word for certain uh, programming languages. You could also use file or in phi, whatever. But if I want to open a file, open. So from here, I need to specify two parameters. The first one is the file path or the file that I want to work off of. The second one is asking whether or not I am reading from the contents of this program or, or of this file or writing to them. And we use a string character for this. R stands for read, W stands for write, and A stands for append. But to at least start, we're looking at the idea of reading those contents. Oh, Unicode, oh, okay, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so here's a fun little thing. If you're working off of the backslashes because you're uh, on a Windows machine, you might remember that these are Unicode character. So it sees those slashes and it's like, oh, you need to tell me, you know, uh, the what's you need to give me a correct Unicode. Well, we're not dealing with Unicode. This is actually some of the headaches for file paths. But now if we take that and run it, perfectly fine. Uh, this idea here is the slash slash First slash, again, Python thinks that that is a special character. Instead, we're saying, no, it's not a special character. Just give me the uh, slash. Uh, and a way to see this in action is if we print that, you'll see that it completely ignores that. It's like, oh, you, you want the slash there. OK, that's perfectly fine. Uh, another way, uh -huh. slash, 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 slash with the forward slash and Python's, you know, a little forgiving here where it, it sees the different slashes and it's like, okay, perfectly fine. No error. And it still works. This a little easier, as you can tell, I don't need to do double slashes. So uh, pick and choose which way you want. But either way, now I happen to have my file in my program. But the problem is, as you can see, it's uh, not incredibly helpful. It's actually an object, just like many things that we sort of have worked off of in our class. But the entire idea now is, well, I want to load those contents into my program. I typically like to use a variable called contents, phi.read. You notice, oh, look at that, no errors. And that's because that dot read is going to say, take everything that is in that file, read it into this variable. And you can see that that is exactly what we see. It's not pretty as you can imagine. Uh, I can clean it up just a hair by printing it instead of uh, say display it. But there are my contents. Now again, if we think about this, I've had to use the absolute file path but you may not have Adam on your uh, computer, or rather you may not be working off of your desktop, or you may not be using uh, CSC 111 as a folder for your contents. And so this is once again, where the idea of relative file paths can come into play. Once again, I'm in the week 06 folder. You notice it, pretty little, uh, green to indicate we're in we're using this file handling demo file so once again if we think about it if i wanted to do relative file paths instead of specifying all of this information the first thing i need to do is specify go up a directory go up a directory 
then that next slash is saying go down a directory. Here's that data folder. Go down into the data folder, and there is the readings.txt. So readings.txt. So I take this, I run it. Notice no errors going on there. Take it. We've made a nice little change. The file is still being processed the same way, so we still have to read in those contents and we still have to print them out. And so that is how well, you do absolute and relative file paths.